being titled. So Streptococcus pneumoniae are gram-positive bacteria that causes um, respiratory tract infection, mostly in children and adults. So um, these um, bacteria, they are gram-positive and also they form alpha hemolysis on our Edgar plates because this is actually my review on uh, this um, conference is based on my review, uh, review article that I've published but on my main research which I have written the thesis we um, we actually carried out the experiments where you can see the visibility of streptococcus pneumonia itself and under the microscope as it is gram positive it is purple under the microscope the shape you are seeing, um, the diplococcus that you are seeing, is as the way we see it under the microscope, but in different color, which is purple gram positive bacteria. So uh, this bacteria actually colonizes the respiratory tract, as you can see in the image. It causes um, pneumonia, majorly in adults. It causes meningitis in children, otitis media, and also septicemia. So. Um, as perceived, um, this bacteria also, the mode of transmission, majorly we are talking on elderly children, which literally is referring us to um, carried uh, individual. Majority of us are carrier of a lot of bacteria of which we don't know, which can be deadly and also can be mild. Can be mild. So streptococcus pneumonia begins from colonization. It colonizes the nasopharyngeal as we have seen the image initially so it's if it's majorly colonizes asymptomatically without showing any symptoms without even making anyone feel as if you are having any situation it makes you feel as if you are not having any diseases or something you are healthy but you are a carrier of this bacteria Majorly when children are born or they are growing in their early stage they are majorly carrier of streptococcus pneumonia then as we grow, the vaccination and everything will be making things to be coming into a normal stage. So it, uh, from, coloni uh, from being colonized asymptomatically, it, it can progress to the main colonization in the sense that it begins to show more, um, more symptoms of infection when it is not being taken care of for a long period of time. So it, then it shows the reflection of other, uh, other um, diseases causing pneumonia, meningitis and all. This can happen to children and this can happen to old adults. Mainly streptococcus pneumonia causes infection in young children between the age of two and also it causes infection in adults and mostly people that have comorbidity diseases, people that are like HIV patients, that they already have so many infections in them, that's why mostly they have to carry out some um, tests on them to derive whether they have this or that. So moving forward, we have the virulence factor. The virulence factor, why do we need the virulence factor? The virulence factor are the major fact that determines the, um, the streptococcus pneumonia diseases infection and whole and the, this image shows the image of um, uh, the virulence uh, factor and the most important virulence factor we have of course we, we based on research we see more new virulence factor like pili and it is more um, advanced on its own but the major one that has been very fascinating all along is the ca ca um, polysaccharide capsule and also the uh, pneumonizing. The polycast, uh, for, for my research where I did on pneumonizing and autolyzing or the um, um, polysaccharide capsule, we derived that normally when we want to check on the virulence factor of streptococcus pneumonia, we majorly go for the um, autolyzing and pneumonizing. And importantly, they have to be kind of uh, present. And if not, thing will even be present or if it will vary, the autolyzing is okay to be vary. Of which in my results, I, I found that some have autolyzing, some of the isolators autolyzing, and some have pneumonizing. And that makes us to progress to sequence analysis. Okay, now we are not there. So um, where I'm going is that the most important virulence factor here is 
polysaccharide capsule and the pneumonycin itself. So now we are going to dive into the pneumonycin, uh, the uh, polysaccharide capsule, which is the major spread of the strain, the serotypes. So um, as we can see in the image, we see how the um, polysaccharide capsule are so many. So the, serotype, um, the polysaccharide capsule drive us to this place where we have more, more than, where we have more than, uh, more than 98 um, serotype um, distribution. Because uh, this is, uh, the serotype capsule is actually in relation, uh, the serotype capsule is, um, I don't know how to phrase this, but the serotype, cap, uh, the, uh, sorry, the pneumococca capsule is the, is the strain, um, reaction of um, the um, the serotypes that's why to know to talk on the uh, polysaccharide uh, conjugate vaccine and everything we have to understand the serotype uh, to be to diverse in the vaccination we have to understand the serotype which is in relation with um with the polysaccharide capsule i hope we get that so um so um, this serotype is now more than enough. Like before, it was limited. Gradually, it's progressing. As I as I begin a lot of research in 2018, uh, the uh, the number of serotype we have as at then was around 90. It's not even up to 95 then. But now we have up to or more than 98 serotype. And uh, for the, for our serotype. So some serotype frequently colonizes the nasopharyngeal. Some causes um, pneumococcal carriage infection. Uh, pneumococcal carriage, they just stay there asymptomatically. They don't want to cause us um, deep infection. And some causes invasive diseases that are critical. And the most interesting part about this serotype is that they actually shift. Now we have serotype, serotype replacement. So, which means the serotype actually shifts. So, cont as continue, so the serotype distribution has been identified as the most important, the most important factor that they, they uh, define the disease rate of streptococcus pneumoniae. And it also defined the potential of antibiotic resistance. In this aspect, based on my research, um, there are some serotypes where you have high rate of serotype distribution and where we have high rate of serotype distribution, it, um, it's actually affecting like maybe this particular serotype is high and is common, is even present in the antibiotic, uh, is even present in the PCV and despite that, we still see that is actually in relation with the antibiotic resistance or antibiotic susceptibility. So this serotype distribution has to re it relates to anything we want to do about the um, organism streptococcus pneumoniae. So researchers also found that streptococcus pneumonia um, is to uh, keep uh, causing infection despite the availability of these um, of vaccine and everything. This is based on, um, this point is based on the shift as explained earlier that the serotype, the, uh, the serotype now they shift and they make replacements. Like that's so fascinating, so interesting though. So, um, so um, now I move to what we have seen in this serotype distribution based on different countries and based on Malaysia firstly. So in Malaysia now, the serotype distribution we have um, among clinical uh, uh, among clinical isolates, they are different from um, the serotype distribution we actually found among carriage. And some are very similar. And this result shows that there are limited, um, there are limited um, findings about this study. Like uh, there are no much more um, epidemiology study on streptococcus pneumonia carriage and everything like that. Another most important factor is that this streptococcus pneumonia, the serotype distribution, um, the variation, the, all this variation, they, they vary based on location, based on age. As we explained earlier that serotype distribution um, uh, the um, children younger and adults 
like 65 years old, they are majorly arboring this streptococcus money infection. So as we explained earlier, so um, this is actually showing us that based on age, location, um, location, um, geographical environments and everything, this um, serotype distribution differs. In case like now we are in Malaysia, what we are going to see. So this is the distribution in Malaysia based on carriage and also clinical isolate. And how this serotype distribution actually have the, um, the vaccine coverage. So we actually get to that where we actually know that sometimes the, the vaccine co coverage might be, we might actually have been taking the vaccine and eventually it's not functioning in us and they are avoiding most infection. So based on study, this is actually the distribution based on location, uh, on different location in Asian country. So this is actually our little findings in the sense that um, this stereotype varies and there are some areas and uh, there are some locations, there are some countries where the stereotypes are actually similar, where they have close um, serotype distribution and there are some um, places, countries where the serotype distribution totally differs. These are the most common in these countries. It's not just, um, it's not the overall serotype that are present there, but the most common ones in the countries. So now we move to pneumococcal vaccine. So when we understand the importance of the serotype distribution, that's why how we can actually dive into the vaccination. So the vaccination is of two types. We have the one for the adults, which is PPV, and we have the one for the children. Also from the PPV, some of the children can actually take it, but the potency is higher for children. So the PPV is actually of three types where we have PCV and uh, the PCV is of the data where we have PCV 7, 10 and 13. Why are these vaccines important and why how are they related to the serotype? They are related to the serotype because it's the strain of all the serotype that is used to develop this vaccine. So that's why this PP, um, PCV actually means that the number of this um, like PCV 7 now we have seven of these, uh, seven serotype, seven strain of serotype in this vaccine. That's what it means. Just like the PPV, we have actually 23 of the serotype. Based on study um, from CDC, it's actually stated that there are more developed vaccine for streptococcus pneumonia. So these um, vaccine, they are very important in order to prevent the, stre uh, the streptococcus pneumonia infection to arise, and also in order to pre uh, in order to prevent, and also sometimes in order to treat, but majorly to prevent is to use vaccination, and to treat is to use antibiotics. So, <clears throat> for the uh, for the vaccine, these are the serotypes that are present in each of these vaccine that was shown before. So for PCV, we have this seven serotype. For, uh, for PCV7, we have these seven serotypes. For PCV10, we have this, um, these 10 serotypes. And for PCV13, we have these 13 serotypes. And for PPV23, we have this 23 serotype. So when we look at these serotypes very well, the serotype 7 to 13, they have similar serotype. It's just more addition of several serotypes that are combined to them. So, so um, the evolution of this uh, pneumococcal vaccine, based on um, on location, as we have explained, different countries actually implement the introduction of vaccination into their country differently, based on their experience or based on their rate of um, based on the rate of pneumococcal diseases so for malaysia now for so long there was no implementation of um, pneumococcal vaccine that it is mandatory to take pneumococcal vaccine or you have to you have to do this to have pneumococcal vaccine it wasn't implemented in the pediatric immunization program but in 2020 it was 
now implemented freely for children because the rate of pneumococcal disease is actually improving. From my study, from the main research, I actually identified that the, the rate even increased higher because we collected sample before COVID-19 and we actually also collected sample after COVID-19. But to our surprising, the rate at which we got after COVID-19 was much more higher. So, um, so now they've implemented the pneumococcal vaccine into the into the immunization program. So, like I said, different country implement this vaccine. They license it differently in different country. So, these are the evolution of how different country de define to to the, uh, to implement this vaccine in their country and everything like that. So now we move to um, the coverage. How does, um, what is the rate of pneumococcal coverage in Malaysia and also in different countries? So this actually shows that based on how different country actually implement this vaccine and why they delay implementing this vaccine, yeah, um, this shows the coverage of how the um, vaccine actually help in preventing the uh, I, I, like now when we collect isolate when we have maybe carriage isolate or clinical isolate how many rates of of um how many pcv uh, coverage does each is uh, does all of those isolate gives us so for malaysia 74 percent majority of the um these are based on carriage isolate not based on clinical so 74 percent has actually been covered with pcv and likewise singapore 68.7 percent has been covered with pcv vaccine for children and also 75 for vietnam philippines has 65 percent korea is 37 percent 53 for china and 60 60.20 for Taiwan, 73.7 for um, Sri Lanka. So and these are European. Then 70 for Europe and 84 U 84 USA. So this shows that the stereotype coverage differs based on country, just as the way the stereotype distribution varies, and just as the way stereotype replacement has come into place. So. This is it about the stereotype coverage. So the efficacy and outcome of the vaccination. Vaccination is very important, and the dosage is really is really the dosage also is different based on country. But this shows uh, this uh, this dosage is the authentic <laughs> uh, dosage for vaccinating the children, and um, the the efficacy shows that like. Uh, state the importance that fascination can take place before um, we anything or something like the way children has to be mand uh, it has to be mandatory on children to to f be fascinated when they are young between the months of two six and three and thirteen months it is important that children are being fascinated to prevent them from this pneumococcal disease where it causes cough sometimes it makes you swell up and um, sweat sometimes causes cold and distress it causes a lot of distress when um the symptoms begin to showcase so um it is important to have pre-vaccination and post-vaccination most time when people have actually taken vaccine before they believe that it's okay nothing will happen like we have the covid vaccine and we have um the first dose second dose and eventually we, we, are, we were given the booster dose so this is like pre-vaccination is um of course this is not kind of related like they like that pre-vaccination is um the dose one and two no but uh in the case of this streptococcus pneumonia pre-vaccination is being if we are able to take the pre-vaccination where we don't have infection or we don't have any situation and eventually we proceed to post-vaccination even after we have taken the vaccine we actually strive to take the vaccine again to prevent us from further infection so um in conclusion uh as we have seen as as described streptococcus pneumonia is actually a pathogenic organism 
sometimes it is um, asymptomatic and sometimes it is actually symptomatic and it is often in high mobility and mobili mobi um, mortality so sometimes it makes people die in different country the the most uh, important organism that cause high rate of death is streptococcemonia especially in location where vaccines are limited so introducing vaccine is very important and it's very reasonable to be taken on time not because you are actually feeling the symptoms before you rush to take the vaccine because it has a good impact to prevent um to prevent us from widespread of diseases also from horizontal transmission of streptococcus pneumonia infection so that's all from my side thank you very much <sighs> hello. Yeah, hello. Thank yeah, you so thank much you. for me and for your beautiful presentation. And um, we are really sorry for our inconvenience. Uh, if you don't have any questions to Dr. Sonia, feel free to in Malaysia. So, um, so, uh, in summary, Sorry. Okay. In summary, uh, introducing to her, um, between the um, year of 2019 to 2021, we were able to collect 307 samples on, uh, from elderly children to um, actually identify carriage um, individual. So in this collection, we were able to actually get 59 positive pneumococcal samples so that means we have low rate of pneumococcal results so um as begin firstly we go into the introduction of the methodology we use we use um nasa swab for the collection of the sample from children then we go into the phenotypic identification of all the high solids then we did dna extraction to uh, for the positive isolate so um for the uh, for the collection of NASA swab, we actually use um, transport media, any transport media to collect the sample from the NASA pharyngeal of the children, at least one centimeter hinge. So uh, after collecting the sample, we we take the sample into the laboratory within um, three hours. So uh, we uh, the sample was put into the eyes after putting back into the transport media. So immediately we get into the laboratory, we are able to do the streaking on the um, on, I, uh, on the blood agar. So uh, the phenotypic identification we carried out on these sample, uh, samples were, um, we did um, non, um, med, uh, molec um, sorry, microbiological identification, which is um, the normal streaking to identify the um, morphology of the um, bacteria on the plate. Then after then we move to bowel solubility. So um, this is it. Uh, we did the identification by putting uh, putting um, putting the um, using the transport uh, the uh, NASA swab. You know we put the NASA swab into the transport media. So we pick the NASA swab, put the uh, streak it on the uh, agar plate then this is actually the result of our growth. So in identifying streptococcus pneumonia, we have greenish brown um, um, color of it and also the, the way it smells. So to proceed for the identification, there is also the gram staining method to see under the microscope as it is gram positive bacteria. So for hearts, we actually move to um, bowel solubility then optogene susceptibility. When we do optogene susceptibility, if there is zone of inhibition, that means it is actually streptococcus pneumonia. But if the sample does not have zone of inhibition, that means it is not streptococcus pneumonia because we all know that we have different streptococcal um, species. We have streptococcus uh, mites, we have oralis, we have different types that are in relation to streptococcus pneumonia. They are kind of in the same ancestors. So, um, so after we actually did the identification, then we proceed into the 
DNA extraction. So the DNA extraction also gives us the ability to actually do another identification. This is where we check the virulence gene of the streptococcus pneumonia using the PCR. So we were able to check for uh, autolysine and pneumolysine. And also we did multiple PCR for serotype distribution. So, so here is the, okay, so uh, for the autolysine and pneumolysine, we were able to get um, good result for um, for majorly the um, pneumonizing more than the autolysing and also the result varies and for the uh, macrolide resistant gene the uh, MEF A was much of what was much higher than the MB uh, for the macrolide resistant gene we have um, three macrolide resistant gene now so we have MEF A, we have MEF B. So MEF A and MEF B, they are actually, um, in, uh, in, they are actually in relation to one another. And as for MB, it is um, target modification. And uh, for the uh, MEF A, they are of F flux. So uh, for the MEF A, so I actually since MEF A and MB are similar, so we actually go into the MEF A alone. So for the method, the result was also higher than that of MB. So moving to the antimicrobial susceptibility pattern. So antimicrobial susceptibility pattern in relation um, in you know this streptococcus pneumonia, we were actually able to use four antibiotics. So we use ceftriaxone, cefotaxime, penicillin, and erythromycin. So in these results, we actually see variation of width. Uh, majorly, I, uh, we did minimum inhibitory concentration instead of um, um, dextrifusion and others. So we actually use uh, minimum inhibitory concentration. As we can see the result, we can see that there is um, the, the zone of inhibition and where we can actually read our results as we um, like uh, where we can actually read our result that okay this is the the the, uh, the zone of intersection um, where we can see that okay this for erythromycin here in the middle we see that the zone of intersection is actually two and for the other ones we see that okay for the penicillin we have 0 0.25 and for the uh, ceftriaxone uh, we see that we have like 0 0.325 and something so, so, um, so the result shows that um, those are the methodology initial. So the result shows that among the because like we collected sample from children, majorly children. So we saw that the rate of carry that we have is actually is actually um, the total carry rate we have is much higher in children that are less than uh, in children that are less than five years old more than the children that are older than five years old so because the sample was collected between the age of um um infant because we were able to see um i, th I think one infant so uh, from infant to um then we were able to collect from um multiple children to to uh, age of 12 years old so so um, we were able to see that truly, like we explained that um, streptococcus pneumonia actually is much more, uh, is the rate of it is higher in children that are of young age than the children that are already developed in immunity against infections. So the rate is higher in less than five years old children where we have 25.7% and also we have the carry rate of 10.6% for the children that are older than five years old. So um, so uh, for the PLY and LYTD, so we have higher rates in children that are older than five years old for the uh, PLY. PLY is pneumonizing and LYTA is autolysing. Like um, LY, um, PLY are the, are the um, 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 the most important virulence factor, PLY and the polysaccharide capsule.
that is for stereotype distribution. So for the PLY, for young children, we have we are able to see 61 percent. Then for the LIT is higher for for the children that are younger, which is 67.8 percent. Likewise for the uh, MFA and MB. For MFA is totally higher than MB, and for MFA plus MB, they have similar results with that of. MB because the the uh, the whole of the result that we get for the MB is similar to the one that is for MFA. So um, for stereotype distribution, stereotype distribution we have we are able to get different results for stereotype distribution, and um, for this stereotype distribution there there are PCV coverage, there are vaccine coverage of which if uh, since these children are carrier of streptococcus pneumonia, if they are able to be fascinated with these vaccines, they can be prevented from more severe pneumococcal disease. So um, we have the non uh, PCV stereotypes too. So the PCV, uh, the PCV seven, the PCV ten, and PCV thirteen. So we have different um, stereotypes that we we were able to identify from our result through multiplex PCR. So the percentage of all these stereotypes that, like this is the rate of the stereotype that we have, and these are the percentage. So the highest percentage of the stereotype that we have in this study is actually 7F. So 7F is actually 7F and 7F7H, 7F7, Okay, 7F7A, yeah. So, this stereotype um, shows that, uh, okay, this stereotype is among the PCV uh, coverage, which is one of the important factors why we actually venture into um, stereotype distribution. And other stereotypes too. Then there are more, uh, like stereotype 11 haze, um d now, and 15. So these stereotypes, they are not in our PCV coverage. Of which they have high rate of high rate of pneumococcal carriage, of which this one can actually um, show the light that we can use um, antibiotics as treatment. So, so stereotype distribution uh, in relation to vaccine coverage was the first one. So stereotype distribution in relation to macrolide resistant gene. So macrolide resistant gene are majorly the um, gene that are responsible to um, the potential of uh, an organism to be resistant to the, uh, this particular antibiotics, which is macrolide. And we under macrolide we have erythromycin, and in this study we actually use erythromycin as one of our antibiotics of interest. So for macrolide resistant gene, we have um, this serotype under the macrolide resistant. Gene. So in case um, in the result, uh, in the in, in case from our findings now that this uh, particular isolate couldn't um, benefit from the PCV and they have this uh, ma macrolide resistant gene. Can this, um, they have this macrolide resistant gene present, so they can make use of this um, um, vaccine coverage, which is in relation to the stereotype distribution. So, um, so here is for the antibiotic susceptibility. So the rate of our, uh, the most resistant antibiotics in our study is actually erythromycin. So uh, it's the most resistant and the most um, susceptible. From previous study I studied, uh, we derived that from previous study, ceftriazone and cefotaxime they are actually 100% susceptible. But in this study, we actually identify that these two antibiotics, they are not 100% susceptible. For, for ceftriazone, we have 68, and cefotaxime, we have like 62. So. And for, every, uh, for penicillin, which is also an important antibiotic in treatment of respiratory tract infection, and which is an important antibiotic for um, uh, streptococcus pneumonia, we have a lot of intermediate results than susceptible results and 
resistant. But majorly, uh, our erythromycin, which we have further study for the, since this erythromycin rate is higher, this triggers us for further study for the macrolide resistant. Why is this erythromycin the, uh, having high rate of resistance? And what is happening with the, it is with its um, gene, something like that. So, um, so we really stereotype distribution also with the um, antibio antibiotic susceptibility pattern. And for this result, we were able to see that um, some of the susceptible result they have the, the important stereotype distribution. So. Here is the findings of the result, and in, um, the discussion goes that um, the rate of, majorly the rate of um, pneumococcal carriage is limited because there is no in, uh, enough um, study on the epidemiology of streptococcus pneumonia. So the rate of this finding is kind of very limited, and during the process of this study, of which we intend to collect much more samples and do much uh, more laboratory work, we were able to uh, it was close to the period of, it was even within the period of um, COVID-19. So based on our study, the total percentage of um, uh, pneumococcal carry we were able to derive was 35.5, uh, was 30, uh, uh, from our own study was um, 35, Based on previous, okay, the carriage rate for previous study before this, of which we use for our own calculation of um, study, um, um, for uh, because we do we do the statistical analysis to get our to derive the rate of sampling collection. So, so um, the previous study give us um, they have thirty four point thirty five point four percent of carriage rate. Why our study actually have thirty six point three, which means the rate now is higher than previous study, of which is still low. If we if there is further study, maybe we can have a high rate of um, carriage rate. So um, for the results, we have higher rate in children that are less than five, and we have lower rate in children that are older than five. And for the, our um, POI and LIT, we have higher I, uh, I POI in children older than five, and we have lower in children that are, we have higher LIT in children that are younger than five. So for the MEF-A and MB, MEF-A is higher in all the isolates than that of MB. So for our stereotype distribution, the most common stereotype distribution are 6A, 23F, and 19H. Uh, that was for previous study. We, they have 6F, uh, 6A, 23F, 19H, 6B, 19F, and 15C. But for our study, we have 7F and A, uh, 23F, and 15B, 19F, and 11 and 6 so for this um, stereotype distribution, we see that we have common stereotype with previous study, but the most important stereotype here, which is part of PCV7 and um, PCV13, we have the 7F and A stereotype. So um, then out of the whole sample, is not all the sample that are typeable for our stereotype distribution. We actually have one isolate that is not typeable and it's actually positive to streptococcus pneumonia. So, so um, and for the vaccination coverage, we know that um, no, there are non-vaccine stereotype too. So antimicrobial susceptibility pattern, on the other hand, we have, um, we, we were not, um, for this um, presentation, we were not able to finish the whole of the, whole of the whole sample within the time. So this is actually like a limited result. So the stereotype distribution based on the AST varies as erythromycin is higher. And the most, um, the highest stereotype distribution in uh, erythromycin is 11H slash D. And this 11H slash D is actually not in the PCV coverage. So uh, the conclusion of this study uh, is that more, more study is needed in the 
in the field of epidemiology of streptococcus immunity to, to know more pattern of this carriage, uh, carriage rate of streptococcus immunity and to further identify the virulence gene of which the virulence gene might not be only strept, um, uh, autonycin and immunocin can further into the um, PSA gene and also the um, PLI and other virulence gene of streptococcus immunity. And interestingly, our research was con conducted on carriage sample for strept, uh, streptococcus immunity, and it has shown us the importance of um, the vaccination. That this, if the children are being vaccinated, it can actually even reduce the rate of which we have the 36.3. It can even reduce the rate lower. And interestingly, the Implementation of vaccination is now in Malaysia in the uh, immunization program. So, um, this is all from my side. Thank you. question you are free to ask.